Welcome to the Simple Drain Back Installation Do's and Don'ts Part 1 where we'll discuss installation of the tank. Our goal in this is to talk about a 30 year install and the key to a 30 year life is proper installation technique. 10 do's and don'ts. First in part one we're going to talk about thinking our design through before we start. We're going to be sure that we drain back and isolate our tank bottom inside the pan. We're going to mount our controller nicely in a convenient location. We're going to pay attention to our fluid levels. And in part two, we're going to mount our collectors correctly. We're going to insulate them, keeping in mind heat. We're going to use great care with our sensor placement. We're going to right size the right material and we're going to make sure our system is commissioned and working correctly. So let's go. Number one, think through your design. On the installation page of simpledrainback.com, our website, you'll find a number of pre-drawn configurations. These are very valuable and useful. You can use these to estimate your components and to determine how you're going to lay your system out, thinking it through. Three main things to think about. Where's your tank? How will that connect? Where are the collectors? How will they be mounted? And the run between the tank and the collectors. And as we discuss this, we must always drain back. This is a simple drain back. Keep in mind also that the best designs are compact designs. If you can't find a drawing that works well for you, go ahead and draw it up. But no matter what you do, Try to limit yourself to not more than three trips to the hardware store. Okay, here we go. Basics of shade and orientation are critical. Our goal is to have no shading between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m., the best part of the solar day. As this slide shows, you can see that the most intense productivity from any solar system will come between the hours of 9 and 3 that's where the most intense radiation occurs. So make sure you have no shading. Also keep in mind that there is winter and summer paths of the sun that while in the summer you might not have a shading problem, the winter low sun angle could introduce some shade. Generally speaking, if you're 15 degrees plus or minus south and 10 degrees plus or minus the orientation of your latitude, you will be mounting your collectors correctly. What if there's too much shade? Not every house will work. Just say no. Okay, number two, thank drain back. We're going to look at several examples of collector installation and draining back also in the collector loop. Here we see a quarter inch per foot draining back and that's what we need to see. It's not very perceptible, but the drainage is there. So this is the before, and there is the after. Easily done. Here we're going to be seeing a flat roof drain back configuration on Unistrut. As we see in the lower left, we used risers to get to achieve our drain back. On the left, we have two risers. In the center, one riser and at the far right, no riser. So let's see how that looks. There it is done, sloping a quarter of an inch per foot. It's hard to see, it's not perceptible, but there, quarter inch to a foot minimum. Okay, again, we're seeing a quarter inch per foot, this time on a standing seam metal roof using S5 clips. Here we mount the clips to the left and the right side of the legs of the collector, and that is what we use to achieve our drain back quarter inch per foot. There it is finished. Not very perceptible, but certainly it's there. We also want to keep in mind as we mount our collectors that the T1 collector should always be at the exiting part of the collector. So keep in mind what direction you slope your collectors. Here we see a quarter of an inch inch per foot on a ground mount system in this case a little bit more than that that's fine quarter of an inch is the minimum get that water gone and four more examples of flat plate collectors all set in drain back mode 
Once again, it's not highly visible, but it is apparent that these do drain back, and that is the job. What about attics and slope? In a drain back configuration, when the pump shuts off, the air that's at the top of the tank has to find its way to displace the water up in the collectors. Go ahead, even in that freeze protected area in the attic, don't set any traps. Give yourself a smooth and even flow. You'll get an excellent operating system that does not make noise and works well. Quarter of an inch per foot minimum. Number three, isolate the bottom of your tank. In this case, we have a hot solar storage tank in contact with the cold ground in a moist environment and that creates rust and that is not what we like. In these three pictures you see solar tanks in pans, the one in the center, a solar heat exchange tank, raised up off of the tank bottom with treated wood such that the tank is not in contact with the pan and it will stay dry and live nicely for 30 years. Tile, brick, wood, styrofoam, just keep the tank isolated from the cold floor. Number four, mount your controller solidly. Whether to the wall or to the tank, mounting the controller is important for a long life. Here we see the three mounting sc screws that are provided to mount your controller. The differential controller is um, set to come on at 16 degrees, go off at 4 degrees difference in temperature and to read that you'll have to press the buttons that's why you want it secure mount the collector onto the tank by punching a small hole in the tank there's two inches of insulation you won't hit the inner tank go ahead and secure it at the lower left and the lower right after hanging the controller from the top center number five fluid levels very important the flow meter assembly which comes with each tank is the key to filling the tank correctly and to setting the flows correctly. There are two ball valves that isolate the tank, the flow meter assembly at the bottom of the tank, which you see here on the left. Go ahead and open those up when you fill the tank. As you see on the left at the top, the flow meter will be set ideally for you to see where the water rises up, the correct fill level is two inches below the top of the lid, below the bottom of the top lid, excuse me. On our right, you see the ball valve that's used to set the flow. That ball valve right above the pump is used to give you the correct flow levels, which you read on the flow meter in gallons per minute on the left of the flow meter read from the top of the stainless steel float. The recommended flow levels are three quarters of an inch for each 4x8 collector and one gallon per minute for each 4x10 collector or one gallon per minute for a 30 tube array. So if you have two 4x8s or two 4x10s, two 30 tube arrays, you would simply double the recommended rate. However, consider pump cycling. This is a Sun Reports data log of a system that is operating nicely. As you see from the yellow line, the pump kicks on 16 degree differential in the morning, but then it's not quite hot enough and the temperature differential is reduced to 4 degrees and the pump shuts off early in the morning because the sun just is not hot enough yet. But after two cycles of the pump, the pump kicks on and stays on all the solar day long and you get smooth and even flows. So while you set your flows at recommended factory levels, one gallon a minute for four by 10, it's often a good idea to turn the flow down maybe 10% to 20% for winter or if your collector orientation isn't perfect. That's it for part one. In part two, we'll look at the do's and don'ts for collectors. Thank you very much.